Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today. I'm tying this wee brown pulling sedge hog. It's more of a sort of wet fly type sedge hog. Um, this one, you can tie a sparser variation, uh, basically the same scheme, and it does make a good dry as well. As always, I will put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content the monthly fly tying meetings and enter the giveaways you can also subscribe hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos that's all appreciated so I've got my hook in my vise this is a size 10 Camazan B175 and I've just started some fluorescent orange Danvils uh, from 140 it doesn't really matter what thread you use for this stage as long as it's kind of a light orangey colour, it's just to preserve the colour of the dubbing. And I'm going to just get a bit of seal fur here, this is Rob Denson's and it's Otney Peach, which is a bit orange, um, it's, it's in the orangey side of an Otney Peach, but it's ideal for this part. Um, Just dubbing on a bunch of this, and I'm coming round the bend, back up, just making a ball basically, or an egg shape, I suppose. And then bring my thread up to the front, and I'll switch over to the black. Now, if you want to, you could just stick with the orange thread all the way through. Um, but I prefer to go to the dark core of the fly. So we're going to tie back, and don't worry about going over the dubbing here, it just this will actually help to um, spread your tail a wee bit. And I've parked my thread now at the barb of the hook, which will be my tie-in point, and then I'm going to tie in, I've got here say half a dozen strands, five strands, something like that, of orange crinkle mirror flash. Just going to draw it in so the waist's basically the length of the body. Tidy everything up. You don't need to be super fussy with your underbody here. Just get that on top and you can use your thumbnail just to sort of spread it over that dubbing. And you can see there it's quite a wide spread across the top of the that dubbing ball. We'll just trim this just now. Length, I want it about the body length. Not too long. You could go a wee bit longer if you wanted. Up to you. And then I just like to sort of get a wee crease just to help it to sit. And then I'm going to follow that with a small amount of deer hair. I'm using roll back. The darker tip you can get, the better, I reckon, on this fly. Just trim that away, clean all the rubbish at the bottom, see how it is. You don't want any super long fibres, but don't stack it. You want it, I mean, I don't know what I've got there, about 20 fibres maybe at the most, but they're all they're fairly even, you can tap the end a wee bit, but you don't want it aligned. Any super long hairs, just take them away, and I'm just going to let that be slightly longer. Basically, the, where the majority of the pale fleck is, is coming to the back of the flash, so the black tips are just slightly longer. Just catch that in. Nice and secure. I'm away my waist. And I'm going to put on this fly four wings and a hackle. Um, for the body, I'm using this dub, and this is John Ferguson's Fiery Brown blend. It's got wee, a very small amount of gold and pearl flash in it. It's quite a dark, fiery brown. Um, 
I used to tie this fly just with that kind of chocolate brown and this is this fairy brown is quite close to it um, but you can suit yourself ordinary seal fly is fine you can put a wee bit of flash through it if you want up to you so I've got my first section of the dart dubbing and, and you need to think right so there's a wing there's a wing there's a wing and there's a wing right at the front right so I'm putting four but you need to really kind of divide it into thirds I'm going to get a slightly thicker bunch of deer hair than I used for the tail same same hair same dart tip row here clean out all the rubbish and I'm going to offer this in it's I want the tips slightly shorter right so the black tip I don't know how well you can see that the black tip or the the bulk of the black tips most of the black tips on this are sitting basically above the pale tips or the pale band on the tail section so they're always just that like eighth of an inch shorter catch it in you can just sort of rock it back and pinch it up so that the hair doesn't roll onto the side if you're sedge hogs if your hairs are rolled on the side they'll end up spinning when you strip them or the fly will sit on its side rather than sitting properly so you just need to watch that and that's the thing like the rotary vice you can I can just turn that and check once I'm happy with the position I'll just tie back against that dubbin and tidy up and I'll grab another wee bit of the same dubbin again winding back so that you're covering in there's no any spaces and then you can just run your thread through if you want to tighten it up a wee bit another bunch they're quite repetitive Hedgehogs, hedgehogs. But they, I mean, they're a very good good taker of fish. They're, they're very effective. Got to come in, but the same size a bunch here. And the same thing, the black tips are coming to the pale band, the wing before. And I'm just going to continue that staggering all the way back. So basically each wing's actually the same length and the ends are just getting progressively further forward. Don't don't be tempted as a lot of people are to make the leg, each wing longer so you end up with everything this back here. It's just far too much. Same again, just get that on. Show my thread along like that, make sure everything's got a thread base. Have a wee look and check, it's fine. Tie back. More dubbing. And it's just repeating the process basically. Don't come too far forward. You need to make sure and leave yourself the space. So, see, there's I've got my ball of hair, a wing, a ball of hair, and then another bo a, a ball of dubbin, I should say. Dubbin, hair, dubbin, hair, dubbin. So, I'm going to put my third wing in, and I've still got a quarter of the shank. Right, which will then be where I put the head on. And it's just exactly the same procedure, just take all the crap out the bottom, all the under fur, make sure there are no super long hairs. 
line them up, put them in. You can flatten it with your thumb a wee bit if you need to. Just always check the far side. Trim. And then tie back. And the reason the reason for tying back is it, it it means that you can the deer hair will spread slightly or flare a wee bit over the ball of dubbing, but also it means that you don't get any gaps, right? If you're just always going forward, you might end up with a wee space which you don't want. A bit more of this dubbing. Again, going back. And there you can see, I've basically got a nice straight line along the top of the, the deer hair, there's nothing's crept. There are no gaps in the underside. Right, that's, that's what you're looking for. So I'm going to put the final wing on and a wee bit of hackle. And you could actually, I mean, you could tie in a wing and put a bit more dub in and just stop. Or you could put legs on or put a muddler head. Entirely up to you, really. Um, all of those var variations will work. Get that again nice and secure. Don't worry if this one spreads a wee bit or flares a wee bit. Um, you can you can just crease the hair slightly. So you don't have the dubbing to gather at the same, and that the hackle will to an extent, but it's not the same, it doesn't have the same effect. I'm just using a red game hen hackle, quite a dark one. Um, it's nice on this. Come in, tie it in by the tip. some wax on my thread fold that back tie over it and just keep your thread tight put that away and then fold your hackle and just wind it. And it will obviously depend on the quality of the hackle. How many turns you need. There's two. Hmm. It's about right there. Two and a half, three. Three turns. Just draw everything back. with a nice wee neat head and then you can just quit finish just ignore the hackle you don't need to worry about it it's well secured then always two snap that away Come in with your Velcro. I like to put that dubbing up into the wing. Then I'll come under, underneath and sort of pick that out a wee bit. And then all it needs is a wee bit of varnish, a couple of coats, and you're done. Just let it let the brush come over the eye, coat the thread, don't get it in your hackle. Clear that off. And there you go. That is a deadly fly. As I say, it's I mean it's 
it's great for the wild brownies, but it does work for stockfish as well. Um, and I've caught fish in this in Wales and Ireland, England, Scotland, Japan. Um, I mean, it will any still water trout. If there are sedges about, or if there's a bit of wave, you can put it in the point, fish it like a washing line, you can put it in the top dropper. It's a great fly to have in the box. So, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it was useful. If it was, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines guys, bye.